welcome. My hair is full on Patrick Swayze, Patrick Swayze on point. Like Jamie requested. She said, me, 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 me. <laughs> And that translates into, I want Patrick Swayze hair on my man. And now you're out of your Nick Cage era and you're going into McConaughey yeah. era. So Picasso had phases and mm-hmm. he went from cube phase to blue phase. And I've gone from Nick Cage phase to, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Be like who if you did. So the longer your hair gets, the cooler you get. The ch- uh, more chill. That's the yeah, more chill you get. Yeah. So, welcome everybody. We decided to do Tom Coom Part Two. Two Cooms for <laughs> the price of two. <laughs> exactly. Two so no de- uh, no discounts when it comes to old Tom, baby. Uh huh. Tom is high priced because he he. Oh, actually, when it comes to movies, Tom Coom is high priced. He's a box office money maker. I mean, he generates the dang, the 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 cheese. He the can feta. he can afford to make a whole village on top of a mountain just to do one stunt. Well, I was looking through a lot of his movies and and a lot of these ones that I hadn't seen, like The Mummy, and because I was like, didn't they already make The Mummy with Brendan Fraser and yes, The Rock that and mummy The was, Scorpion King? And that was a perfect movie. Why do we got a Why do we got a Tom Coon? Yeah. We, we got a Brendan Fraser Mummy. Uh, Why do we need inferior mummy? Leave well and good alone, Tom. But then I realized... There's nothing wrong with the Brendan Fraser mummy. Then I realized, oh, actually, uh, Tom Coombs movies just make bank, dude. Like, everything he does. So all the Mission Impossible, super successful franchise. The Mummy, super successful, 400 million. I was something crazy like that, so... Tom has shut my mouth. <laughs> right? Yes. He's a serious actor. Well, The I Mummy mean, 2017. Did you... We had just seen this. Yeah, it I'm took saying. took us five years And I've never seen it. it. Yeah, you never watched it, did you? Mm-mm. And it pulls on a lot of the old esoteric lore that actually we do find in a lot of Tom movies. A lot of the Tom foolery, right? Yeah. It starts with death is a doorway, like reincarnation, Egyptian <laughs> proverbs, Wallace Budge... Uh, Magic E. Wallace Budge got that over yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. It's Actually, it's over here, I think. Anyway. Because um, it starts with Templars, 1127. That's right. AD. And, and what are the Templars up to? They're hiding some MacGuffin in their Templar. It's a jewel. Isn't it? Catacomb, it's a, it's yeah. It's a, a red it's jewel. It's a red ruby thing. On an Athame, a ritual dagger. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. But they're in England. And, yeah. So they hide it. And the Freemasons and the Egyptologers um, That's have the a secret society. Technical term, yeah. Egyptologers. <laughs> um, the Freemasonry Egyptologers. They found the tombs under London and traced it back to Egypt. Are you having a hard time talking tonight? No, I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> Did you write <laughs> Egyptologers? <laughs> no. Okay. I yeah, so wait that. a minute. How the Mason. The dis- did it have Masons? Or we're just saying that it's themes of Freemasonry. Well, the Templars are. I know that. But yeah. I'm saying when they get to England, right? Yeah. yeah. The tombs under London, which are actually like cities and yes. whatnot. But and what, were was, there Masonic references? They were references? saying the Templars went to Egypt and brought back this mummy artifact. I gotcha. But does it reference Freemasonry specifically? Or are we speculating that? No, just that through the Templars. Because it's London. Yeah. No, because they told the Templar story. I know that. Yeah. But I'm saying that London is the home to world Freemasonry. Yes. With the Grand Lodge. So exactly. I'm wondering if there's a lodge connection is what I'm asking. Not that I remember. Okay. Do you? Well, uh, a mummy's tomb is kind of a coom pod. Well, it's and Osiris. This is, a, this is a, to- a tomb coom movie. Yeah. Tomb Coom. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. Tomb Coom. Because it's Tom Coom. Yes. So the Coom found the tomb of the mummy. Tomb Coom. <laughs> Coom Raider. Tom Coom's Tomb Coom. <laughs> no. Coom Tom Raider. Cruise in the Temple of Coom. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Tomb Coom. Calm down. And. Somebody was Coom. chatting the other day. They were like, what is he talking about? Who's Tom Coon? What does that mean? <laughs> we even got that mean? other people saying that. 
apparently. Beastly Analyzer BLA, calls them yep. that. Okay, so okay. they find this Templar artifact, and they yeah. have the... They find it underneath London, and then what? We've got like this... Um, Russell Crowe shows up as the controller of the artifacts of... Like, like London's control of ancient artifacts, whatever this is. Yeah, he's in charge of all of the... Do we think he's like a museum curator or something, right? He's probably got many... Um hats because he's like the curator of all of the mystical things and so perhaps he's also some kind of british intelligence spy yeah. person and he's calling the and shots magician right, or whatever right. he's got magician he, yeah because it was all about magic egyptian magic and all of their i know but i'm saying is there anything at the beginning that makes us think that about russell crowe or we don't know because yet? he was all excited when they found the red thing Okay, so he's after mystical objects, sort yes. of like the you know Himmler and people went on quests for mystical objects, right? right? Like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. Okay. Um, and then you've got the oh, and this was a lot of Indiana Jones ripoffs, wasn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. We were talking about that. So it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark, but with Tom and King. and Moses and um, okay, because like Princess Ahmet. And we were looking that up, and was she real? I don't think she was real. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Remember? Yeah. But the whole thing was she was going to inherit the throne until a boy, she had a brother, and then she got pissed. Right. Talking so about... you have to be big mad. In other words, Brendan Fraser, mommy, real. This, mm. this story not real, right? <laughs> I, I don't think that one's real either. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so she made a pact with Set to become like a book, a living book. Remember, she got all the two tattoos. The living word. Yeah. And what else? Oh, she got like two pupils. Well, that signified possession, right? Right. So the god or the goddess possessed her, right? Yeah, and Brittany did that in one of her weird videos, and one of the new girls did that in her. Oh. Well, we were watching another horror movie and they had double pupils. I forget what it was. Yeah. Evil Dead, maybe. Yeah. So she's got Set and... Well, now Set is the Satan character. Yes. In in Egyptian mythology. Correct. Right? And it's odd because she becomes a, a living... Well, I mean, their iconography is, is... Their language is iconographic. So it's imagery, right? Little images. Mm-hmm. Little pictures. Mm-hmm. Pictographic, I guess. And she becomes a living, walking version of a book with all the words written on her. Mm-hmm. And I always think that the, there's an overlap when we see this kind of an imagery from Egyptology. Because Egypt did have, in their Memphite creation narrative, the notion of reality being spoken as a word. Mm-hmm. So it overlaps with Genesis 1 and the word God spoke and reality came to be. So reality is fundamentally information it's fundamentally a verbal word and she's this weird dark goddess figure you know we've we covered with the psyop cinema guys the notion of the dark goddess she pops up in movies all the time and but sets a male character right Mm -hmm. but she's possessed by a male character Mm -hmm. and so she's the dark satanic goddess and um hermaphroditic too right and they're in a place in Mesopotamia called Haram. And isn't that like a, a word in... Yes. Yeah, like like forbidden I don't know if it's... It, I mean, it, Muslims bad. use it for forbidden. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. I, I, but it may be an Arabic word for that. I'm assuming. I don't know Arabic, but... By the way, guys, if you want to support the show, you can via the Super Chat <laughs> function. Super Chats are through Streamlabs. So you can use the Streamlabs link to uh, send us Super Chats if you'd like. So we're getting deep into Egyptology and uh, uh, Tomb Coombs' <laughs> version of Egyptology as he achieves immortality, basically. Yeah. But we he... don't want to mention that's a little too much for YouTube. So let's. Oh. Well, we can mention. I'm talking code. We can mention this stuff, but let's stay away from like that. Okay. Too deep. <laughs> um so tom cruise is the liberator of precious antiquities and so they're like soldiers but they also are tomb raiders right? well yeah he's it's like, like the two michael kane and and uh sean connery characters in man it would be king yeah and so they're they're basically grave robbers mm-hmm. 
the grave robbing adventurer soldiers who use their soldier missions as cover for grave robbing. Yes. So he's kind of um, already... Uh, he's the Han Solo, Indiana Jones, Scallywag Anti-hero. Character. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> that has to prove himself and like overcome his dark side. Right? Talk at the internet, people. Talk at the <laughs> they internet, They won't hear people. me if I don't talk at <laughs> Talk at the internet, okay. people. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, so they have to call in an airstrike to... Okay save themselves right well they're being hunted by some kind of taliban or something i don't remember exactly what it is but the airstrike is actually what blows a hole in the ground where they find the tomb right yeah so they blow a hole in the the airstrike strikes this little town and then they find the tomb of the mummy the scary one all right so is this different than what they found in the the yeah, Below so they London. found... Okay, do you remember in Indiana Jones 3 where they found that Templar tomb under the library in Venice? Yes. It was like that. It was just like that. In fact, again, I said, and there was rats. Yeah. So it was literally... This is like Tom Cruise as <laughs> Indiana Jones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now... But in the desert, they find this like tomb that's raining mercury. Yes. Remember that part? And Mercury is the messenger god. Yeah. So Mercury's what Thoth. was it? Right. So and Thoth, by the way, is the according to Plato, it's the mysteries of Platonism are the mysteries of Thoth. Yes. Remember? Yeah. And that's why Neoplatonism, I think, ultimately goes back to Egyptology and Egyptian philosophy. So in other words, Platonism is usually what a lot of these esoteric systems are. Um, mimicking or bar- borrowing. Hermes, Hermetic is Hermes Trismegistus. Who That's thought, thought, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, all the... so in other yeah. words, Tom has in this movie all of this esoteric stuff, but that shouldn't be surprising given that, right, obviously everybody knows Tom Cruise is a Scientologist. Scientology comes out of Crowleyanism because... Uh, Hubbard studied all the way up through the levels of Crowley right before he started Scientology. Yeah. And that's all public record. So um, my guess would be that the esoteric presuppositions of this goofy movie are, you know, loosely sort of Crowley and stuff. That's why we have reincarnation, Egyptology, Templars, uh, Mercury, Thoth, all being referenced in the movie. Now, why do you think that, was that supposed to be thoth's tomb i don't understand why there's no, mercury in there just as a way to keep her in it and like a toxic thing oh that's that right because her. it was like uh yeah it, and it like keep people away or something well or keep in the end when they catch her they're putting mercury in her veins remember oh so this is kryptonite to her yeah so like knowledge <laughs> defeats darkness man. knowledge defeats darkness yes exactly what are you laughing <laughs> at that's what it means i'm smart <laughs> Um, okay. Because I was trying to figure out, well, wouldn't they be on the same side? No. As Egyptian demons or whatever? Right. No, they fight each other for power, too. Right. Okay, so Set's darkness is overcome by the Gnosis of Thoth. Right. Okay, I'll buy that. Okay, so when they get down in the pit... Like, she's like, don't touch anything. Don't, you know, be careful. And, and he's so cavalier. He, like, unleashes it. And they give her, like, an hour. And then he's having visions of her. Remember, like, his dream girlfriend now? Yes. Is, is the girl? He's, Tom, is Tom Cruise a reincarnation of something from, why, why is he? He's going to be. What, and she chooses him or something. Remember? Chooses him. <laughs> he chose him. She chose him chose him i know but what i'm saying is why is tom cruise having visions of an ancient egyptian chick because he unleashed the thing oh and she's she's showing him who she is yeah i see that makes sense and then people start getting possessed and they have a plane crash the birds crash the plane just like Indiana Jones. Well, she when she's present, birds come, right? Like yeah. Hitchcock movie or something. Right. Yeah. And the crows are being bad boys and working for the mummy. Right. And they 
plane crashes in a church, which is weird. It, it literally crushes a church. <laughs> yeah. And then they have a battle uh, where they're going to sacrifice Tom Cruise or on an altar in the church, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like they're, they're bust. This, this church is in ruins. It's in the middle of the night in England. And it's all dark. It's just weird. Like they are doing a, a, a night. It's a well. It's a ritual to set, isn't it? They're gonna sacrifice Tom Coom to set. Yeah. Right. Well, they're gonna like imbibe him into the body or something. Well, they had a dagger. They were gonna kill him. Yeah, but like sacrifice and bring set back to earth. Right? Okay. Okay. But before that, she has to rebuild herself, and she like sucks her life force out. And then Russell Crowe shows up. He's like the Royal Society. Like, that's right he's like a royal society antiquities collector man yeah and then this is where it gets really stupid this movie was okay <laughs> up until kinda... suddenly russell crowe is dr jekyll and mr hyde mm-hmm. what they bring in other monsters <laughs> for um monster clout but <laughs> because mummy is a classic monster so you gotta bring but no guys. wolf man no dracula yeah. <laughs> like we didn't get the the crew together right yeah prodigan Prodigum, I thought it was called. I couldn't. What was? Pro, prodigum. What's called? His the cure for evil. Russell. So Crows? they're trying to cook up this thing, and he has to stab himself with the juice, the good juice, so he doesn't freak out. He has to have his blood sugar. Oh, you mean uh, Russell Crowe? Yeah. So basically, you're saying Jekyll and Hyde is a uh, allegory for Beatus. <laughs> So he has to have his magic insulin his magic so he doesn't insulin. have a tantrum. Yeah. This was just really stupid. And so basically, Russell Crowe wants to control evil with science. Yes. He's a science man who's Dr. Jekyll He's and Mr. He's studying Hyde the science of evil and how to contain it. And how to contain evil with science. Yeah. Which is interesting because I thought Thoth is also Gnosis and that's how we beat Set. Well, Thoth would be the god of science for sure. Like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But... Thoth is a higher science than Russell Crowe's soy science, basically, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so she wants to make Tom Cruise set reincarnated. Right. And evil is always looking for a way to incarnate. Always. Yes. So here we have, you know, Sauron theme here. Yeah. And Russell Crowe is like Jekyll Hulk if he doesn't get his serum tendies. Yes, it's Hulk. <laughs> serum tendies. <laughs> And then, oh, there was like a little Easter egg in this movie where, do you remember in the first Mummy, they had to open it with a book, like a key and a book. Right. And she was, the girl from this new Mummy was fighting in the library. She hit somebody with a book and like it fell on the floor and it was that book. It's the Brendan Fraser Mummy book? Yeah. Interesting. So you're a big fan of the old. uh, I love that She loves the Brendan Fraser Mummy book. So she caught these Easter eggs. I I didn't know these. Um, By the way, if you guys would hit like and share, we're having uh, fun with Tom Coom Part 2, uh, Toon Coom, <laughs> as we cover Coom the Raider. Mummy, 2017 Mummy. Yeah. Um, so was that the answer? I mean, I, I just kind of lost. <laughs> Somebody said sweet cream injections. <laughs> sweet cream injections, yes, because nice. you get the sugars. Yeah. So. <laughs> if you guys would hit like and share, uh, we're having a lot of fun, or Jamie is tonight. <laughs> As we cover the classics from Tom that we haven't covered. Esoteric Tom. Somebody said, what about Vanilla Sky? Well, guess what, guys? We already did Vanilla Sky. And so I put it into the links. Anyway, is there any, anything else in this? This was pretty dumb after this. Um, Once we got to Jekyll and Hyde, it was just too Their stupid. headquarters was in the museum. That was interesting. Uh, so they're using public museums to fight evil with their serums and monsters underneath did you catch that when they escape the underground i mean a a museum is where you get knowledge so what but like it's it's in plain sight and the museum is a cover for these things for these oh interesting so museums might be covers for other things yeah well that does happen i mean i mean indiana jones is a uh archaeologist but he works for the oss yeah and yeah, that anthropologists, archaeologists have have been historically recruited to do spy work, and we've covered that in uh, multiple talks and lectures. We covered the David Price weaponizing anthropology book, for example. 
Um, is there anything we want to look at in the trailer here? Let's see what we got. We got... By the way, people have done entire videos dedicated to Tom Cruise running. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? He's the best runner. Well, I didn't realize seen. this was this was a whole uh, this was a thing. Did you guys know this was a thing? So, Tom Cruise got really serious about running in movies. Literally. Not just doing his own Because they made more money, too. Because they real they figured out that people actually wanted to understand his like they want to watch him run because he got really good at running. Isn't that weird? I will say this for Tom Cruise. Like, he is legitimately admirable for all of these elaborate things that he does. Like, all the stunts that he does on his own. He went crazy about learning how to run perfectly. Uh-huh. I mean... And he can run so fast. To do this on his, on his own in his movies is pretty pretty interesting so so this is a whole thing on even this moment in get out but nobody runs on screen quite like tom cruise Look at that. Including top Gun Maverick. cruise has now run in 44 of his 52 movies a ridiculous start that has turned into a strange mythical legacy people can't get enough of compilation videos and supercuts of well i was gonna play the guy's did... um video and this guy did a whole video on it this has four million views people are dedicated to tom Coom uh, running. I thought Liam Neeson movies were like Liam Neeson running. No, Tom Cruise actually perfected this way before Liam Neeson did. Did he run in Jerry Maguire? Oh, that is it, isn't it? That's him running in Jeremy. So he runs in every movie yeah. and people apparently, they actually tabulated that audiences like it and will pay more and watch <laughs> him run in movies if he doesn't, as opposed, because in Legend he doesn't run. And that's the move, that's the one Tom Cruise flop. Actually, it's a, it's a flaw. And I wonder if it's not because he didn't run in it. It's because he did the cartwheels. He showed Jamie his package. No. So anyway, this is a whole thing. We're not going to play this whole video. If you want to go watch the uh, nerdy YouTube breakdown of Tom Cruise running, this guy did a whole 10-minute video on it. Yeah. Okay, so okay. back to Mommy. Is there anything else in the trailer? That and then he becomes set and roams the de desert because he gives his life. With a dude. Yeah. So he ends up running off in the desert with a dude. That's true. As a the I overcome death by becoming part evil. Exactly. Gnostic, Does that make sense? Gnostic theos apotheosis. Right. Through there's a anyway. Okay. So uh, mommy, I thought first half of mommy, I was into into it. I thought this is not going to be too bad, and then it was just garbage. Sorry. Terrible. Okay, mommy down. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow I actually liked. Uh, I mean, it is actually completely a 100% Gnostic movie. I said it was Starship Jamie Troopers Jamie got it right plus away. Plus Groundhog Day. Yep, she got this one right away. Yeah. Uh, when I said it's it's Tom Cruise, sci-fi, Groundhog Day. Yeah. We turned the movie on and she was like, oh, it's this and he has to beat the alien by doing this and it's this. And she got it right away. The aliens are called mimics, and they have to do with time and space. Yes. And they get inside your brain, right? Well, and yeah, they, they, per they trap you, yeah. Make you perceive reality as a time loop. So basically there was an alien invasion, and we lost because the aliens have this ability to manipulate time. And there's a specific statement when uh, Tom Cruise is trying to figure out how to foil the the entity when he's talking to um emily blunt and uh, the nerdy dude when they're war gaming that it actually tells us that it is the biblical deity because <clears throat> tom says Cruz says that the alien <coughs> goes by alpha and omega mm -hmm. that's jesus that's the creator god so the whole story is explicitly an anti-creator god near the creator god is the one that traps us it's this alien deity, this uh, mimic, right? Or the, it's the king of the mimics. The mimics are the archons in the Gnostic sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's interesting. He, he starts out as just a um, 
spokesperson and not even a real soldier. So he's kind of like pretend. <clears throat> he's on- a fake. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's like, I, I just do PR. I don't actually fight. And they're like, now you're recruited to fight. Yeah. And. So he's mimicking a soldier. Right. So he's, he's a mimic of a soldier. And the idea here is that the evil creator God or the invader God traps you in a eternal return of time space bound prison. I wonder how close this is to Scientology lore. Like interesting. Zenu. Let's see. Zenu was a tax collector, a universal tax collector who thought that there was too many beings in the universe. Yeah. Oh, I didn't remember all and that. So they gave wow. him this task of like depopulation or whatever. <laughs> and Universal <that's>... <laughs> tax collector. <laughs> so wait, is Zenu a bad guy or a good guy in uh, Scientology? He's just like an alien overlord. He's a kind of a villain. Um, Speak louder at the people. Trying to f- bring up all my Zenu facts. So he put all of the people in a volcano. So, it's like a, it sounds like a bunch of Pokemon. <laughs> Like Scientology, like a bunch of throwing down Pokemons or something. But they live as spirits called Thetans, and they wander the earth and they attach themselves to people. Yes, this so part I remember. Is this yeah. like mimic or not? Well, the mimic attaches itself. Yeah, so one of the mimics has attached itself to Tom Coombe, which is keeping him in this time loop. Uh huh. Now, in my analysis, I went into talking about how this is the way that Abraxas is described by. Uh, the Gnostics. In a great majority of instances, the name of Abra- Abrax- which is just a flip version of it, is a composite figure having a chimera-like appearance with a ba- resembling a basilisk or the Greek primordial god of chaos. Um, excuse me, primordial god Kronos, not to be confused with the Greek titan Kronos. According to E. Wallace Budge, who you mentioned, as a pantheus or an all-god, <clears throat> Abraxas appears on the amulets with the head of a cock or of a lion uh, and the body of a man and the legs of a serpent, which terminate in being scorpions, types of the Agatha daemon. In his right hand, he grasps a club or a flail, and in his left hand, he has an oval shield. This former is referred to as the Anguipede. Budge surmised that Abrasax is a form of Adam Cadmon of the Kabbalists and the primordial man that God made in his own image. Note the correlation of Kronos, God of Time, and the serpent and Kabbalism, which relates to Cage's imprisonment. Cage is the Tom Cruise character in this. Get it? Cage. He's in prison. He's in a cage. He's in a cage. Eternal return symbology and the Ouroboros are also studied with this idea. In Plato's Timaeus, the Ouroboros is a snake, snake biting its own tail. It signifies the eternal or the uh, prison nature uh, of the temporal universe. Uh, Plato goes on to talk about it being a snake biting its own tail. The universe is, and uh, anyway, I, I cited some other articles about Gnostic mythology. Um, man, I really went crazy on this Edge of Tomorrow now. Like, when I watched Edge of Tomorrow, I was like, I gotta write this 15-page Gnostic You said analysis. mystical Gnostic time prison. Yes, that and, is what well, it is. And it's D-Day every day, because, like, the day he wakes up is they have to storm the beach of the bugs or whatever. Mimics, mimesis. Mimics call to mind the ancient Greek concept of mimesis. Mimesis in Plato dealt with the artist and his copies of reality that he would make. The forms in Platonic philosophy are copies, and in Aristotle, mimesis relates to poetics and storytelling. In this film, <clears throat> the mimics copy uh, Cage's reality over and over and over, so each day is a copy. Mm-hmm. The forms themselves are copies, uh, oops, uh, thus it, it creates a temporal psychical prison cycle. Philosophy student Zuska has written in his article on mimesis that, uh, this again, this gets super, super long, I'm not going to read all that. Uh, here, if you guys want to read this Gigantor essay, you can go read all this. I'm not going to read all my <laughs> citations, but. It's like he's respawning in a video game. Exactly. It is like a video game. Actually, a lot of scenes in this are like a video game. When mm-hmm. he's in that suit and mm-hmm. he's fighting, it's like. And they look like Matrix creatures. The mimics do. Now, here's the crazy part. And I remember at the time, Lord Voldemort would give 
analyses of this movie when it came out. He was like, I want to see Edge tomorrow, folks. It's not by accident that uh, he goes to the Louvre, folks, and he beats a giant demon underneath it. <laughs> okay, folks. Now, here's the thing about the Louvre. Like Inception, the mystery of what is happening in Cage's own, is in Cage's own psyche, and his inner and outer worlds are actually connected. While I don't want to go overboard with the Gnostic Demiurge element, I must add that there was a positive symbolism in the fact that the Omega ends up being a parasitical entity located underneath the Louvre, a gigantic glass pyramid commissioned by Grand Orient Socialist Francois Mitterrand. It has 666 panes of glass, right? Yeah. So it's created with this Masonic philosophy. And the demon resides underneath that, which is odd. Yeah. He's the Omega brain that has the ability to mimic time. Yeah, but it's underneath the Louvre's pyramid. And doesn't the Louvre have a... Yeah. It has an upper pyramid and a down a point yeah. down pyramid. And You've been there, right? Mm-hmm. They're a world-conquering hive mind organism. And it's like as above, so below with the pyramids. Tell us about the Louvre. You've been there. Um, it's really huge. There's a lot of way cooler things than Mona Lisa, in my opinion. Um, Talk at I like people. sculptures a lot, <laughs> like marble sculptures. Um, well, it seems to me that that all sounds aesthetically pleasing, but giant glass pane pyramid sounds it doesn't ugly. fit the rest of yeah. the um motif. so it's it's ugly masonic art right yeah remember dan brown did the whole thing about it yeah that's when people started but paying attention is to it me. ugly i've never seen it um it's striking because it comes right down to the floor you can like walk up to it Are you talking about the the one part on that the goes bottom? underground? Yeah, you can just like. Is that the inverted? And it lets all the sunlight in. Is that the one the... that's inverted or not? Yeah, so there's one in the courtyard that's above ground, and then one below ground. I'm trying to show people. So this one. Yeah. That's obviously above ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, that's ugly as heck, dude. You got this giant palace and this ugly. It doesn't. Pyramid? Fit together, that's for sure. Okay, where is the inverted pyramid? Un like, down where you get your tickets and in the Does lobby. Does it look like this? N no, it's coming down from the ceiling. I want to see the inside. inside. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. And then the, it's on touching another little pyramid? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, that's just ugly. So, you don't think so? Um, I wouldn't call it ugly, but it doesn't fit. That's for sure. They could have just left, put that somewhere else. You have this palatial thing, and then you've got this. Yeah. That's ugly. It's, it looks like a shopping it's mall. It's avant-garde, It looks like a shopping mall, sure. <laughs> but it's not, it looks like a mall. Yeah. It's not um, okay. of the same style. So, let's move on. What what now? That That's the essence of Edge of Tomorrow. You got to defeat the Gnostic creator God that's well, imprisoning you he, in time and space. They share a nervous system. Tom and the entity. Yeah. Again, why is he always like sharing minds with these creatures? Well, evil's a part of us, and then yeah. we have to reconcile our dark side, right? I mean, that's what we always have in these these uh, pagan conceptions. Well, Emily Blunt and John Krasinski end up in these military CIA functions, don't they? Are they the new couple like Ben and Jennifer? Probably. Probably. Yes. Um, now, she's not in this, but... Emily Blunt. Is... Emily Blunt. I mean, excuse me. John is not in no. this. No. But they're in their sci-fi, you know... What's it? Quiet Place? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank um, you guys for the super chats. Much appreciated. We, we will get to those here in a minute. Um... And if you guys want to go deeper into my analysis of There's a weird thing this, about the blood, too, so... Oh, that's right. Like, uh, it's in his blood. And they want his blood now. And then when he gets a blood transfusion, he loses his power. Power. That's yeah. right. And there's, now, like, a, a Eucharist weird thing. How so? I don't know. I just put that question mark. Like... Well, because of the power in the blood, yeah. right? Yeah. 
But when he gets a blood transfusion, he loses the magic that he has in his blood. Yes. Which has been given to him by this entity. Right. The entity causes his blood to have mystical, magical powers. Yes. But he has to get a blood transfusion. But how does he still... Well, then they just go and blow it up. Then he has one last chance. Like, he's on his last life when he loses his okay blood tie to the organism um rose rosicrucianism right yeah, yeah her name is rose she's the mystical rose that's that, the middle name well they have yeah. but the male and the female principles have to come together to beat to defeat to defeat the uh, the gnostic overlord yeah it's always that way and he did it of course he did because he's ethan well he's got he always does it He's why you doing him. this to me, Ethan? Yeah. <laughs> Ethan, why you doing this to me, Ethan? <laughs> gonna grab his foot. I'm gonna hurt her. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna find her. I'm gonna hurt her. Give me what I want. Give me what I want. I want the you did it perfect. Foot. Give me the rabbit's foot. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna find her. I'm gonna hurt her. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up is Oblivion. Uh, I actually like this one okay, but Jamie figured this one out pretty quick. Didn't you? Well, you guessed the cloning, and you, you know guessed the Gnostic stuff, and you've pretty much seen every movie. They do, they do be repeating their things, <laughs> ain't they? Yes. But you guessed everything from the cloning to the the tet, yeah, right? Yeah. Tet or Grammaton. That's it's the again the creator god is the tet. Oh, tet or Grammaton. It was like a geometric shape, like in Hellraiser. Yeah, it's an inverted pyramid. Yeah. Because Tom Coom, again, destroys the creator god underneath the pyramid in the Louvre. Right. But this time it's 2077. Right. And Earth has been attacked by this thing, which we, we think it's aliens. And and there are many clones, but you're we getting don't know way ahead of us. Okay, sorry. Well, so, okay. The official story is scavengers broke the moon. Right. And they had to nuke them, and Earth is toast. And then and you got Tom Coombe is basically uh, a guardian of the space things that are harvesting water because the moon's burning. because they're taking it for the survivors, survivors who live off planet on the moon of Saturn, right? Titan. And this is all lies. Yes. So here we have the classic noble lie. Of the imprisoning deity again. This is Platonic stuff, right? The impl- the uh, imprisonment includes the control structure, the allegory, of the cave narrative that you have to be controlled via a noble lie. It's for your good, though. And in this, the Tet, which it's an AI, right? It's not mm-hmm. an, it's not an alien. It's an AI. Yeah. Uh, the AI has enslaved mankind. We find out eventually, and it's pitted the. Super soldier clones against the scavenger revolutionary normal humans. There's always a group of humans who have survived who live underground. They don't look human at first. Red boogies. <laughs> right? But if you um, get boogies. to know them and they take off all their gear, then you can see underneath. Their feet. Every time Jimmy wants to refer to this element in you... sci fi movies, <laughs> she cites rat burgers. Are you saying these are rat burgers? And she does her terrible Sly Stallone impression from Demolition Man. Because Dennis Leary leads the human opposition underground in Demolition Man that yeah. literally lives underground and they eat rat burgers. <laughs> I just saw an article on how they found rat burger, rats and people in the burgers. Mark I'm Wyatt. sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because everything else from Demolition Man is coming true, so why not that as well, exactly. right? I mean, if you go watch Demolition Man, which we've done, it was, it was a lot of fun. It's It's amazingly predictive. Because so many of the dystopian stories, like the dystopian stories left out the social justice stuff. And that's a key element in Demolition Man. Yeah. You get fined when you say mean words. Yeah. And everybody's childlike. Yes. And can't take any. Yes. So go watch it. Actually, we've covered Demolition Man twice. I did it with Tristan and then Jamie and I covered it. So we, we've had a lot of fun with Demolition Man. It's. A must see but anyway let's get back to oblivion so okay. we are uh being lied to by the entities that have imprisoned us scavengers keep attacking tom and the scavengers are of course run by morgan freeman morpheus no not morpheus morgan, morgan freeman. freeman morpheus freeman yeah no um they look like jawas or sand people they do 
So elements of, I mean, there's kind of a Star Warsy element to this. This has some Star Wars. But he Wars keeps having it. flashbacks of his real girlfriend in the in the old world, and it, it's almost right. kind of like um, Planet of the Apes. It is, and it does have Planet of the Apes elements. Yeah, you've yeah. got the you know ruined structures from the old world, and he has a baseball cap, and he wishes he could go to the New York Yankees games, and he's remembering these flashbacks to his relationship with Olga Kurylenko, and that's because he's a clone. Tom Clone. There's so many coombs in their little pods. Remember this were, literally has coom pods. They yes. were honeycombs of There's Tom's. a honeycomb of Tom. <laughs> and, um, what, what, that's when we get to the alien vessel, right? Yeah. The alien vessel is a giant Tom clone factory. Yeah. But he, they need the girl to keep him in line. Yeah, so Tom is given a girlfriend, this redheaded chick, who keeps him in line and reinforces the lie. Yeah. Right? Because she's like, are we an effective team? And they have to say that. Over, yeah. Over it's like he has to repeat again. this stuff. And um, she is sent uh, by the AI to control him. She's kind of his handler, you could say. Mm-hmm. And they have to check in every day with the AI and all this stuff. Anyway, well, come to find out, Tom begins to question his existence and think, hey, maybe I've been lied to. Maybe this is all a bogus narrative. And... Things continue to happen that mount up that let him know that he is, in fact, correct. There's a crash ship, eventually, of Olga Karolinko, who... she Is she cloned as well? No. She came from an escape pod that crashed. Right. But why did her... Why was she in an escape pod? I don't remember this part. I don't either. Anyway. So, Tom happens upon uh, the real girlfriend that his original... Tom clone used to be in love with. Mm-hmm. That's it. So he's mystified when he sees her because he's like, I've been having these genetic memories of this gal and it's not the redheaded girl that I date from space force. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, now he's questioning his whole existence and then he starts to think, Hey, maybe these human scavengers aren't bad guys. I actually think this is, I mean, it's kind of, has a lot of other sci-fi movies in it. Yeah. But actually, I like Oblivion. I think it's a pretty good movie. Well, he's the one clone that seeks the Gnosis. So all the other clones... He's the Neo. Yes. Remember, because Neo's like... Ten, there's been ten other Neos. Right. Right, and he's the one. Whoa. Right? <laughs> I'm the one? <laughs> he did it. You're saying I'm the one. <laughs> Where do I get a gun? Remember when it was John, yeah. John Wick 4? He has like three lines and one of them is like, I'm going to need a gun. I'm going to need a gun. Yeah. And he probably had them in the contract. Like, I'm only saying three lines. They're like, okay, Keanu, whatever you want. As long as you do John Wick 4 because it's going to be $500 million. Yep. Do Tom Coombs dream of electric he, sheep? <laughs> Somebody said. He needs Keanu clones. To do his stuff. So where are we at? The Tetragrammaton. It has a robot droid eye. So this is where it gets like Independence Day. They have to go up yours and like. Yeah, they do the Randy Quaid up your butt. Yes. Of the Tet and (laughs) again. What? (laughs) They did. Yeah. Well, the Tet. Remember, guys, it represents Tetragrammaton, representing the Creator God, the the biblical God. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I'm not surprised, but I am surprised how Gnostic all of these are. Literally every Tom Cruise movie is just rife with Gnosticism and, and sort of, uh, I don't know what you would call it. It's not even really Freemasonic, though. It's more like like a Crowleyan-style esotericism. It's um, that thing you didn't want me to say, maybe? Yeah, Crowleyan styles. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's more like that. Um, it's just straight up Gnostic, like Luciferian Gnostic philosophy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I didn't realize that there was this pattern in the Tom Coombe films, but but they're there. So he kills the God, the Creator, and he says, F "Well, you, but he Sally. but he, he does it through doesn't he sacrifice himself? One of the clones, right? But there's a million Tom Coombs, yeah, Tom clones." But... <laughs> What? Honeycomb. 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 <laughs> um, and I he... mean, it's literally in a honeycomb. Like, the whole spaceship is a giant Tom clone factory of honeycombs. Yes. 
<laughs> their infinite coombs shadow self and mirror self you wrote down you well that's because that? he fights himself yes right so at one point we find out that there's actually tons of tom coombs super soldiers on earth mm -hmm. and one of them gets out of his boundaries of his limitations and sees the other one and then they have and this fight like the spider-man meme they have a fight amongst themselves, right, to see, I'm the real Tom Coombe. No, I am. <laughs> yeah. And one of them ties the other one up. And and this ends up working out in the end because Olga Karolinko ends up having a boyfriend. She got a spare Coombe she got in a, the trunk. She had a spare extra Coombe in the trunk. So they could sacrifice one to save the world. <laughs> Is there a junk Coombe in that trunk? <laughs> Is there an extra Tom in that junk in that trunk? Do you remember when he said F you Sally at the end? Because the Tet always came to them as their a boss Sally? Sally. Right. And he And what was that supposed to mean? When he was blowing her up, he it was just like Yeah, that's like the last that line. That part in Independence Day when yeah. Randy Quaid went up Up yours. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Uh, actually yeah, they probably were derivative. They were pulling on um <laughs> uh, they were pulling from Independence Day, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And last but not least, was this your favorite? Well, hold on. I was wondering. Uh, Are we still watching? No, that's enough of that. Okay. So people didn't realize. I don't know. A lot of people don't realize that there are multiple. There's actually a couple. I don't know how many. I'm not a damn legend nerd, dude. I don't know. But there's different versions of this movie. We cannot be. How's it go? No, so here's the lyrics. So Jamie's cracking up <laughs> at. I was trying to explain to her that there's different versions of the movie because the DVD version that I have is a mid 2000s rework where they tried to repair a lot of the footage and they did a different soundtrack. And I remember when I got this DVD, I was watching, I'm like, that's not the stupid song at the end of Legend <laughs> because I never forget that dumb song because it has the stupidest lyrics ever. And so there's actually different versions of this movie. Well, I have the version Later. that does not have the awesome, terrible lyrics by Jan, what's his name? Jan, Jan Anderson. Okay. okay. And this is a song that he wrote with Tangerine Dream. And Tangerine Dream actually does have some pretty good soundtracks. But um, I've seen the Mystics blather once or twice, but I knew they had a reason. Enchantment plays its cards all right. Hand in hand with the workings of the seasons. Legends can be now and forever. Teaching us to love for goodness sake. <laughs> Legends can be now and forever. Love by the sun. Love by the sun. Do you like those lyrics? No. And that's I not, wish I could play the that's actual not how song. It goes. The song is so. Yes, it is. Well, kind of. Teaching us to love for goodness sakes. <laughs> Legends can be now and forever. That's how Dude, it that's goes. Elmo. That's how it goes. What do you mean? I wish okay. I could play it. Uh, here, I'm going to put it in the chat. I can't play it. Of course, it'll get dinged by the stupid copyright. Even though it's the freaking worst song ever. Everybody in the chat, you can go. There's the link. Go listen to this horrible song on your own. But, yes, there's two, uh, two endings to this movie. So... I've seen them both. Um, I liked the new little young Tom Cruise. You just like you can... seeing his little basket and his little skivvies that he's Why wearing. Why were there so many cartwheels where you see his little hiney? <laughs> he keeps flashing us, dude. And it's his, like, like basket underneath. He, he's playing freaking Puck from Shakespeare or yes. whatever. And he wants to flash everybody his, so, his Puck junk. He... Oh. He what? He lives in the Edenic Forest in rags. Yes, he's uh, a he's he's nature boy. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Nature boy. And you've got I'm trying to find a picture of him wearing his garb. The Lord of Darkness wants to destroy innocence and daylight. Right. So darkness, interestingly, is a demon. It's not actually Satan. Because, believe it or not, you see Satan later in this movie, and Satan's kind of like a, a, a glowing green idol. He's a glittery, yeah. A glowing green glitter idol. It's really weird. Man, who did this? Ridley Scott? This is Imagine an early Ridley Scott. Right. from Alien to... No, Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Alien, Blade Runner, this. To glitter everything. 
glitter on everything. I bet. That's not even the worst part of this movie. I mean, <laughs> this movie, well, let me rewind. It's in one way terrible, but in other ways, it's actually good. Does that make sense? It's okay for a kid's movie, but it's not very it's kid friendly. It's weird. Mm. So it depends on how old the kid is because the Tim Curry demon is still probably the best ver- movie version of the devil ever. Probably. Right? That's the yeah. best part of this movie and is how insane they went with his costume. And he had a glittery hoof too. Remember? It was like, bam. Yes. <laughs> he has a glittery hoof. But I mean, it's a pretty impressive, you know? Yeah. The, he is terrifying. The cinematography, the set design the costumes the i mean it's amazing in this movie yeah it's excellent the story is dumb (laughs) it kind of doesn't make sense it's a mishmash of a lot of different fantasy and mythology yeah and it pulls from things like lord of the rings which we notice now like i didn't notice that before but having redone lord of the rings recently it's like okay blix is basically like Gollum. gump is also basically like Gollum. it's really cool Hello. Yeah, you, you did pretty good. I can't do it, but he's like a dead ringer for Malcolm in the Middle. I was saying it's like, yeah, it's like Malcolm in the Middle is in this movie, and, <laughs> he, he, and I think that little guy plays he plays Gump and Blix. It's the same guy. So also, this is basically a Persephone kind of good point. Deal. Great point. Yeah. Also, uh. Ridley Scott puts this same odd sequence. It's almost the same of the unicorn in Blade Runner. Hmm. Um, I don't know exactly why. I mean, it's not. I don't think it's exactly the same, but they're kind of the same. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if Ridley Scott was just huffing his own tooth, <laughs> thought that this was cool, or is there a deeper significance to the basically the same sequence? Do you remember what I'm talking about when Deckard and Mary Sean Young, they have the same dreams. Mm-hmm. It's because that's how that's one of the reasons that we know Deckard is a, a replicant. Oh yeah, because he has the same dream of the unicorn. Doesn't he leave a little paper thing? Is it a horse? Well, J- Edward James almost does, and oh. that lets Deckard know that Edward James almost knows that he's a replicant. I see. You see, but um, I'm trying to figure out. Like, so I read, you know, like in Carl Young, he talks about the unicorn and various unicorn symbolisms and it comes up in this book and i've cited it before but anybody in the in the chat what are your theories on and if you're in if you're watching this later like did he do this on purpose somebody said no he's just using used footage could be um let's see if it let's see if it is the same i've never actually done the science experiment to see if this is the same so let's see deckard's dream Let's see if it's the same sequence. It's Vangelis, not Tangerine Dream. So that's one differentia. This doesn't look like Deckard. Oh, this is the song Deckard's Dream. Here we go. Okay, so he's dreaming. Is it? I don't think it's the same. Looks different. Here comes. Pretty, I, it's similar. It's not the same, but it is similar, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Are those you? Know, oh, they are unicorns. Yeah, they're unicorns. Wow. So. So really, Scott got between, a thing for unicorns. Yeah, between the two, there is a different, definite significance there, but um, it just depends kind of on what mythology really scott might be pulling from which in this movie he's pulling from every bit of mythology i mean it is lily lilith that's what i wrote down i mean mia sarah well, mia she sarah goes is to playing her dark altar yes uh mia sarah has a shade self that appears and she does that really haunting uh dark dance when darkness is tempting her mm-hmm. and she's almost going to become you know the dark so goddess. She's the princess of nature. And well, she's just the archetypal princess. Yeah. Jack represents she's Lily, she's a virgin, and Jack represents the uh pan. wild pan forest character. Exactly. Yeah. 
And Gump is also like Pan in a way. Yeah, he looks. He he is a Pan character, absolutely. So, but I actually he, he's I, a very Peter Pan also. Yes, this pulls from that exactly. Well, pa- Peter Pan comes from Pan. Yeah. But I noted that there is a um, how would we say it an S C X U A L allegory to this movie. The the movie of touching the unicorn's thing, mm-hmm. which leads to her uh, downfall. She's doing the forbidden Eve thing. It is, yes. Because she has to touch him and touch his horn. And that's, uh, yeah, it's all she allegorical. She comes back and she says, it was magic. And this, if you read about Carl Jung talking about the unicorn, he says it's all allegories for this stuff. Yeah. And that's what this movie is pulling from. And then the goblin comes and cuts it off. Which, so the cutting off of that, Egypto- Egyptology, she Osiris. She caused the fall. Because- she causes the fall, but he gets emasculated because he loses his thang. That's true. That's Osiris. Oh, good point. Yes. Nice. We're pulling out all of the... Um, well, I went deep into this in my, uh, in my first book. So in my first book, there's a really lengthy essay on this movie and i even went into like Avila and all kinds of crazy stuff but when she uh when she does this dark dance darkness tempts her with materiality right Mm -hmm. with all of this uh bedazzled stuff the bedazzler yeah right she's like i'll give you a big dazzler (laughs) she's like yes see he'll give her all the glitter in the world (laughs) Don't you want a be dazzle? <laughs> Do it more. <laughs> no, it's creepy, right? <laughs> That's my Tim Curry devil impression. You sound like the devil from South Park too. Do it. <laughs> nah, that's all you get for tonight. Uh, anyway, so that what was the essence of this whole? Where are we at? What, what what's going on here? Well, I want to talk about the sea witch, old Greg deleted scene oh, if you old, don't have i forgot that, about old greg that was cracking me up <laughs> if you don't have the dvd they cut out this whole thing where he's in the swamp and he has to fight this swamp witch who's all green and looks like old greg from mighty boosh yeah if you've ever seen the uh mighty boosh skit old greg it's pretty funny um but this sequence here it is i actually like this sequence it's it's, it's a well done needs to uh, dark Lily. By the way, that Lily, if you didn't know, it, Mia Sarah is Ferris Bueller's girlfriend. Uh, the mirror, right? Mm-hmm. The shade self. And that's mirror. where the devil comes out of too. Or Exa- yeah. darkness. Darkness comes out. Well, he is a devil. Yeah. yeah. He comes through the portal of the mirror. And so he possesses her, right, at this point. And so this is kind of like a, a mind control altar right personality where her alter self which is this demonic possessed version of her right is triggered when he emerges from the mirror i don't know if this version uh, this version cut out but he steps through the mirror it's a really neat sequence Mm -hmm. actually and he's like the fallen angels who want the human women yes he wants a bride and she's the lily white bride right yeah and he's like i can't do it full though Give me a bride, yeah. right? Yeah. I want I want the sequence and of then, him. He he's the best part of this movie. And I can't find a good image of him. He has to woo her with Here shiny things and a mirror to worship herself. The European cut. That's Ooh. why there's see there's different versions of this. Told you. Reaching out for love for goodness sake. Teaching, go? teaching us to love know. for goodness sake. Like fifth graders writing we these lyrics. We can all be friends now. Sing Lily's Dark Dance. All this garbage, low quality. I just want to see him. You got your dark glitter over there. That's <laughs> some dark arts, boy. Yes. That's some dark glitter arts, boy. And he says. The devil just a stripper. The devil just a damn stripper he, with all that glitter. He says we're all animals. We are all. Oh. Animals, all of us. Yeah. yeah, we are all of us animals. Yep, we are all of us animals. Meanwhile, is that uh, the end? How do no, we get? No, because we light. Have... 
L- illumination. They're what, bringing light to darkness. It's a darkness is destroyed by the power of illumination. So uh, again, illuminate, confirm. Yes. They refract the light right from outside before dawn disappears. It's always dark as before the dawn, and then da- uh, light destroys darkness. And now we get back to the normal fairy seasons. Right? And yes, which where Tom is... can frolic in his in his. Uh, whitey or in his brownie tidies and show everybody his package and he's just out there man spreading with his naked little legs and doing cartwheels everywhere this is the one time like, I'll, this is the one time i'll support the feminists in their opposition to, how, to man spreading <laughs> how many battles did he win by doing little cartwheels and we see his little hiney Jamie was the, really offended by all the Tom, it was no it was the tomfoolery we'll, too call, much, we'll call it tom too foolery. much leg too much coom leg um, well, it was all of it. But when he they were killing him with the light, when they were killing the Prince of Darkness with right. the light, he has that whole like speech. What is light without dark? And we're eternal it's brothers, and you He's can't. He's like, do you this. can't have dark without light. Light yeah. and dark. We are eternal brothers. I am part of you. I am in you. One hundred percent, totally Luciferian Gnostic system. Yeah. Once again, Tom Coombe is always going to be in these super duper Gnostic movies. Um. Anyway, that was that was fun. I mean, it was. I grew up watching Legend, so I never knew until going back and writing, you know, the big essay I did on it that this is a extremely Gnostic film. Uh, and then even the lyrics, if you the brother son whatever it is lyrics, th- those are pretty esoteric Gnostic stuff too. Like, I don't know if I can find it. The the Jan John Anderson lyrics. Legends can be nothing forever. I mean, they're dumb lyrics. I'm trying to figure out what he's talking about. Only lightning strikes all that's evil. To believe in the good in man. To believe in the good in man. Legends can be now forever, teaching us to reach for goodness sake. Love by the sun, love by the sun. Who sings of love's eternity, who shines so bright. All the songs of love's unending spells. Lightning strikes all that's evil. Uh, so maybe it's actually not Gnostic. It's just shitty. Um, I was confused. What's worse, that song or the little song she sings to him? When... Uh, how's that go? I've forgotten. Something about sparrows. Come down, sparrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember how it goes, though. You would die in that place with all those spores in the air. That's true. If it you is. have allergies, you can't be in the enchanted forest. Like yes, that. this enchanted forest is. Uh, you're gonna bring some your bring your allegra if you come <laughs> to the enchanted forest, right? You yeah. need some of that magic of allegra. Um, guys, if you would hit like and share, uh, let's do super chats. Thank you for those guys right here. Storm the cat. Storm the cat, five dollars. Is the divine mind and energy of all three persons of the Trinity? Is it a logos? So it is neither a logi or a uh, energy. The divine mind is a faculty proper to the nature of divinity, which thus all three persons share the divine mind in their unique mode. So the divine mind is what has the logi, the thought wills. A mind has thoughts. The Logi are thought wills. So the mind of God has those thoughts. The one on the left, $2. Jay, how do you fit in with Jamie's male family members? Debate stories? Uh, Yes, I've had uh, one debate that ended pretty intensely with Jamie's brother. And then her other brother and I get along pretty good. He's, He's a nice guy, so... And then your dad is uh, just kind of a chill guitar man, so he's not really a debater guy. Um, but you he's debated easy to go my on brother with. on our wedding day yes. about what were you that night. debating about? I don't remember my godfather was At there, the but reception. I don't remember what we, we argued <laughs> they about. debated a lot. All right, next one's Kevin Farrell. Um, okay. Kevin Farrell, ten dollars. Great show as always. FYI, you are being shadow banned big time. Get more content over to Twitter and Rumble. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I, w- I would imagine show. Uh, imagine show. I would imagine so. I think that's probably the case. Um, 
I am on Twitter, uh, so we've been getting, as we as I said today, two, three, four times the views on Twitter that I get on YouTube. So, um, yeah, look for everything being on Twitter uh, and that being kind of a shift probably. Uh, but I'm also on Rockfin. Remember, everything's on Rockfin. And uh, we are on Rumble. So pretty much every live stream we do here also goes up on Rumble. So I am there. I'm Next working up. on putting mine on Twitter like one a day maybe. And Jamie's doing hers as well. Michael. Um, Michael, five dollars. When Vanilla Sky? Guys, again, um, three people asked today. Uh, what? When are you doing? We, we've done it. Uh, I'm in the chat today with you guys three times. It's right here. I'm not being mean. We did it right there. So people were saying, "Well, you're doing uh, esoteric Tom Cruise movies, but you're not doing Vanilla Sky," because we did it right there. But then... It's in the chat. We did Legend. Come on, man. Yeah, actually, I haven't done a podcast on Legend, which is odd because it's a chapter in the first Esoteric Hollywood book. And I go into much more depth if you want uh, a deeper, serious analysis. On, on the live streams, we don't get super, super serious. but. And in Vanilla Sky, we talked about the... Life with cats. What was it? You did I'm your you did your life. Penelope Cruz impression. When we were both cats. You do a good Penelope Cruz. Yeah. All right. Okay. Next up is Adam nineteen twelve. Adam nineteen twelve forty dollars. Tom Croom wearing fruit of the loom in his temple of doom with Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> nice. Just wanted to send some bucks. Appreciate y'all. I like that. Tom Coom wearing fruit of the loom in his temple of doom with Jeff Goldblum. Ah uh, ah uh, the 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 the. the. The mathematical probabilities are, are, are of Tom Coombe wearing the, 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 the brown whitey tidies is uh, absolutely uh, infinite. Ugh. There we go. Zach. Okay, Zach, $10. Jay and Jamie equals the best. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, and by the way, Adam, great uh, great comment there. Love that one. Lucas Meyer, subscribe. Thank you. And Gary tipped $100. Whoa, Gary Thanks, wins Gary. the night. Gary, 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 Gary. That was worth watching Tom's cartwheels in Legend. Yes. So we subjected ourselves to Tom Cruise's package for <laughs> an hour and a half. And uh, Gary made it all worth it by giving us uh, $100. As well as all you awesome Super Chatters. Guys, I want to remind you too to uh, head on over to chalk.com at chok.com for the best supplements out there like Action 2.0 to boost your energy levels. Like Tomcat 100 to boost... Your testosterone levels. It's Tomcat. Thunderdome. Testosterone. What? Tomcat. Like Tom it's Tong. I know. But... Oh, but tonight is Tomcat. There you go. <laughs> that's my. That's all I can do when people yeah. say do the Tom Cruise. That's all I can do. <clears throat> uh, but that Tomcat Ali will definitely boost your Tom package in your in your brownie, tattered robe and your brownie tidies. She legit mental focus and clarity. Excellent supplement. Use the promo code J50 that's J A Y 50 to get 50% off all those excellent chalk products. Use the promo code J53 life that's J53 L I F E to get 53% off recurring subscriptions and I know when you get Tonkin Ali you're going to want it recurring. I, tr- I I promise you. Trust me on that. Go read the peer review studies at chalk.com, chok.com. Also head on over to Rockfin and subscribe to our buddies, Richard Grove, Grand Theft World, best podcast out there. Next to this one, Grand Theft World, baby. Seven hours every week giving you a super deep dive into the geopolitics and the history lessons that we all didn't get in our normie education. Now we can educate ourselves. Drive R right there. Drive R $1. Merch ideas. No, no, no. Oh, really? Um, excuse me. Unmute, dude. I like it. We got a few catchphrases that have caught on. I'm not trying Try to be, be mean, mean, dude. Uh, unmute, dude. Yeah. We got a few of these. We got a few of these. I think we could work with that. Probably get a shirt or two out of that for sure. All right. If you guys would hit like and share. Remind me of what you think I've missed in uh, the Tom Cruise movies. I would be glad to hear what you guys. Uh, so again, Vanilla Sky, we've done it. Here is the link to our Vanilla Sky show we did right there. So everybody have a good night. I forgot to mention.